So if you're currently a security engineer or maybe you're thinking about becoming a security engineer, automation and programmability is at your doorstep. Is it good? Is it bad? I, I don't know. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. Big thanks to Cisco, sponsor of this video, and they sent me uh, to Cisco Live back in June, which was amazing. It's essentially Comic-Con for network engineers and security engineers and really anybody in IT. You would love it there, I promise. Now, one of my missions while I was there was to get the lowdown, the, all the info on this network programmability thing, this network automation thing, intent-based networking, software-defined networking, net DevOps. I think I covered all the buzzwords. Let me know in the comments below if I missed any. <laughs> and that was the big theme this year at Cisco Live, network programmability. Now, that's not a new concept. We've heard this term for a while. And up until very recently, it was just a scary story we told junior network engineers before bed to scare them. <laughs> but now, I think it's starting to stick, like really. Now, one of the big keynotes, something was said that really stuck out to me, like really stuck with me. And it's a pretty big deal for Cisco to be telling network engineers this, because you know, they're kind of the networking company, right? They said, you are a developer. So you are a developer. What? Like, we're developers now, just like that? <laughs> now, that is pretty heavy. I'm gonna unpack this even more in the coming videos, but watch this. One thing I hadn't thought about, or considered, was that it wouldn't just hit the old, good old routing and switching guys. It's gonna hit all tracks, and the one I wanna talk about today is security. Now, before you start screaming, oh, the network security field is dead, network Chuck said so, uh, programmers are taking our jobs. No, 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 hold on, slow down, guys. You're the programmer, remember? This change involves you. It requires you, it actually depends on you. And it's kind of amazing. Now, Cisco's been working on something, and it's actually pretty amazing. It's called DNA Center, the Digital Network Architecture. Now, this could take up to four or five videos on its own. It's, it's heavy, it's a lot of stuff. But let me give you the thousand foot view. Cisco wants you to deploy, manage, maintain, automate. They want you to do everything for your network from one portal, one little area to log in. That means, you know, you're not logging into a bunch of different routers and switches. I mean, if you've seen my secure CRT from past jobs, I mean, it's just list and list of routers and switches. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Secure CRT is like Putty, and then Putty is basically how you connect or SSH into your routers, the most popular one anyway. So it's basically an SDN controller, which is a software-defined networking controller, which is kind of the, the hub, the base of where you'll deploy all your, your automation. But it's like an SDN controller, but on steroids. And that's just me being a bit shy about it. It's, it's a lot more. <laughs> and again, I'll talk much more about that later because it's, I spent a lot of time learning about it. So you design and monitor your network in DNA Center. And then you can actually automate the provisioning and, and configuration of your APs, your routers, your switches in DNA Center. Essentially, this is the place you will live to do everything as a network engineer and as a developer, as Cisco would say. Now I told you that to tell you this. The super big, awesome, cool thing <laughs> at Cisco Live this year, they always have one big cool thing they gotta tell you, is that DNA Center, a place where you'll manage all your stuff, is now open. Open! They have APIs, which you, if you don't know what an API is, it's basically allowing programmers to integrate their code with whatever application that is. So if you have pro... Ah. <laughs> so if you have programmers or you are a programmer, that means you can make your own app that can integrate with DNA Center, which controls your entire network. That means you can integrate anything and everything you want into your network using DNA Center and its APIs. Okay, okay, well what does that look like and why do you even care? I mean, you're, you're studying for your CCNA, you're studying for your CCMP, you're a security engineer, you, you use the tools you know and love, you don't, you don't care about any of that, you should. Check this out. So right now we're focusing on security. Now, as a security engineer, wouldn't you love a situation where suddenly you're just really amazing at your job and you almost did nothing to make that happen? Let me show you. So let's pretend a threat is coming towards your, your network. Like, you know, a ransomware, like the WannaCry virus. <sighs> that was a rough one. So an attacker is trying to attack your network, is trying to infect your users with ransomware. WannaCry, it's coming, it's here. Now relax, you're good. You've implemented Stealth Watch. Now, Okay, another Cisco product, I know. 
What is Stealth Watch? Stealth Watch is a super smart robot run analytics engine. Basically, it's designed to sniff out bad stuff like WannaCry or ransomware coming into your network. Now, security geeks, pay close attention. I have to mention this because it's so really, it's, it's amazing what it does. It does something cool that really no one else in the industry does just yet. And it has to do with encrypted traffic. Now, what is really great about encrypted traffic? Well, you can't see inside it. It's, it's safe, it keeps you secure. So if you're making a bank transaction, your, your traffic is encrypted so a hacker can't look into it. Now, what's the bad thing about encrypted traffic? Well, as a security engineer, you can't see inside it. Yeah, there is good traffic that should be encrypted and protected, like your, your bank account number or your transaction information going across the internet. But hackers will also hide their malware inside encrypted traffic, which makes it extremely difficult for security engineers to find out if ransomware is coming into their network and who it's infecting. It's estimated that by 2019, 70%, yes, 70% of all Attacks, all, all malware will be encrypted, which means basically 70% of attacks you won't be able to look into or see unless you decrypt it. Now, most solutions require you to decrypt traffic to be able to see inside that and see if any nasty malware is coming at you, right? And yeah, it's possible to decrypt, but it's super expensive to buy hardware that can decrypt a lot of traffic and it can make your network kind of slow. And it's, it's super complex, not to mention, um, Actually, decrypting traffic can be a huge privacy violation in a ton of countries. So be careful. But you see, that's where Stealth Watch comes in. Stealth Watch can just eyeball that traffic and know if it's bad or good without decrypting it, which is kind of crazy. But how does it do that? It uses the network, of course. It will use Cisco routers and switches, and it'll use this thing, the special new thing they have called ETA encrypted traffic analytics. So the Cisco routers and switches will have this ETA data and it will send it to StealthWatch. Now, okay, fine, ETA. How does it actually know if there's malware inside these packets if it's encrypted? Like, that's by definition you can't see inside it, right? So what it will do, and it's pretty cool, is it will use metadata, it will also monitor traffic flows and kind of get a baseline to figure out what this traffic is. So it'll baseline like normal behavior, like good old traffic that you want. And it will also have a lot of good information on what is bad. <laughs> it can profile bad traffic. Basically it's sending NetFlow on steroids, just super NetFlow, it has telemetry about malware and all the dirty nasty stuff in our, our network traffic. No, side note, you can actually use DNA Center to configure all this stuff like super quick. Because just like NetFlow, you have to configure your routers and switches to send data to uh, your NetFlow collector. And with Stealth Watch, if you want to send ETA, you have to configure your routers and switches to send ETA to Stealth Watch. DNA Center will have you up and running in minutes. So Stealth Watch can look at encrypted traffic in the clear without decrypting it and can determine with high certainty, that's what Cisco says, <laughs> it can determine with high certainty if there is malware in that traffic. And the cool part, remember what I said about DNA Center and the fact that it's open APIs. Well, you'll be able to connect Stealth Watch to DNA Center. Why is that cool? I mean, get this, the same place where you configure, monitor, maintain, deploy, automate your network, you can also see all your security analytics all in one place. One place, one portal. You don't have to log into 15 different products. One. So basically you just hang out in DNA Center while you monitor all the things. All right, so back to our scenario here. Let's open this up a bit and I'll tell you about a demo on the show floor at Cisco Live. The security network programmability automation thing. Ah, oh, super slick, here we go. So Mr. WannaCry, our dirty, nasty ransomware, he's, he's on his way, he's wearing his disguise, he's encrypted, and he's on his way to your network. And he tries to slip past our defenses to infect our users without being detected. Hey, hey, but we're good. Stealth Watch smells him a mile away. And boom, this info is available in DNA Center. You're, you're hanging out already, just looking at everything else you can see. And then boom, Stealth Watch says, hey, 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 DNA Center. We got a, we got a, we got a bad dude coming your way. Now I'm gonna tell you again, DNA Center is open. Meaning we can integrate a lot of stuff, not just Cisco products. Now most companies, well, I would hope most companies have an ITSM, an Information Technology Service Management. Basically, it's like a ticketing system and among other things like inventory management. So if you're in IT, you know what an ITSM is. You know what tickets are and, and requests and projects. And if you're not in IT yet, but you want to get into IT, um, you're going to know a lot about this soon. <laughs> One of the biggest ITSMs out there is ServiceNow. Now, let's just go in their demo, integrated ServiceNow. A total third-party ITSM 
has nothing to do with Cisco. They integrated this with DNA Center. All right, we're, we're getting to the good part. Here we go. So Mr. WannaCry, our ransomware, tried to sneak past our network defenses, but Stealth Watch, he knows he's a bad dude. He tells DNA Center. Now here's where the cool programming thing comes into play, the automation. DNA Center, instead of you having to sit there and monitor it and go, oh, I noticed something. No, 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 DNA Center takes care of it for you. He knows Mr. WannaCry is bad news, thanks to Stealth Watch, and utilizes his openness to open a ticket with ServiceNow. So, so far, ticket created, we didn't do a thing yet. This ticket is then set up to notify the security team, you. You get your email or maybe it's a, a mobile notification, you're like, oh, huh, Mr. WannaCry, he's a pretty bad dude. And then you hit the big old bad button, quarantine it. And then you put your phone down or you close your email. And then ServiceNow, using the APIs, will tell DNA Center, hey, this guy said to quarantine it, and DNA, DNA Center quarantines it. Once the user's quarantined, DNA Center then talks back to ServiceNow and says, hey, ServiceNow, you know that thing you wanted me to do about quarantining? I already did it, it's done. Can you let that, that security guy know? Can you get him off YouTube for a sec? And we get the alert, oh, hey, hey, it's already done. Man, being a security engineer, it's hard, right? <laughs> so what did we just see? Well, we saw automation at work. That scenario, how much work did you actually do in that scenario? Not a whole lot. You got a notification? I mean, it's <laughs> it's like checking Facebook. Checked it, oh, quarantine. Yeah, I wanna quarantine that. And that was it. The automation to mitigate that threat was in place. It's pretty cool. Now, that's just a simple demo example that Cisco provided. It, it took them three weeks to program this. That's it. Now, do you see how this could like streamline your processes? I mean, if you're in IT right now, if you're in IT department, you probably have tools and, and, and products that are in this demo, right? That's okay. You can integrate that with the API and DNA Center and you can automate all the things. Now, what's cool about that scenario is, did you even have to be involved as the security engineer? Did you even have to be involved in that scenario? No, not really. You could have had a service desk guy just take care of that for you to mitigate that while you're doing something you actually want to do, like watching YouTube. I mean, I mean, start, no, studying for your next certification or I guess both or watching this. <laughs> now, seeing this example, opens my eyes a bit. Because uh, again, as a network engineer, as and I, I've worked with security stuff and, and all that, Wi-Fi stuff and all, <laughs> all the fun stuff, stuff, uh, you get scared about the automation and the programmability because you don't want to be without a job. You're thinking, okay, all the things I normally do on a day-to-day, -day, these things are being automated, so what do I do? That's why Cisco's saying, hey, no, 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 you're not just an engineer anymore. Because I mean, we still need guys like you who know how things work. But now that you're not spending all your time on mundane tasks like that, uh, you can actually start learning a bit of programming and then coming up with these incredible solutions. I mean, with the open API, you can pretty much do anything you want. You can integrate anything into your, that's what's cool, because DNA Center is like our controller, our big SDN controller for our network. So DNA Center allows us to automate everything in our network with anything we want to use, which is kind of sweet. You're only limited by your imagination and of course your, your programming skills. I mean, if you have, a, if a, pro, if you have a, a programming team or a bunch of developers, yeah, you, you could have them do it for you or you could just learn it yourself. Now, I think the age of just like hearing network programmability and all these buzzwords and going, oh yeah, that'll be the day. I think that's over, like it's, it's here. And it's becoming more mainstream with DNA Center. Uh, when Cisco starts putting out products that are really pushing it, I, th I think it's here, guys. And, and the fact that it's becoming mainstream across all tracks, we've heard about it affecting routing and switching. That's, that's been the case. But collaboration, security, wireless, um, it's gonna be all of this, guys. Whew. Well, guys, that was about it. I wanted to show you something really cool that I saw at Cisco Live. This automation stuff, the network programmability. And I wanted to come at it at first, because I, again, I have more videos coming out about this, but I wanted to show you uh, from the perspective of something I hadn't thought about, and that's security. Security is huge and lucrative. So I want to get you guys excited about programmability instead of being a little timid about it or afraid or not, not wanting to change. Embrace that change, man. It's coming. The only way you come out on top is by embracing it. And like I said, I've got more stuff coming. I talked with a ton of companies who have integrated their, their software solutions or their own custom apps with DNA Center to do cool things with the network. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little, just a little preview. I haven't talked with a company who has DNA Center automating the configuration for Juniper stuff. <laughs> so we're using Cisco products to configure third-party products. So it's, 
It's interesting stuff, trust me. So if this DNA center thing is intriguing to you, or you wanna learn more about it, I got a link below. Click to find out more. Like, do it right now, why not? Or up here. Go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Keep studying. Get on that Python. Get your CCNA. I'm talking to you.